Bien à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. And welcome to this week's reporter, Damanje Kadilka. Great to see you. Hello, Mark. This man has brought us a story which certainly took me by surprise. It takes us back to World War II, uh, to uh, India, where there was a platoon of fighters who, and I was really surprised to learn this, who basically sided with the Nazi Germans against the British. Danaje, tell us how you unearthed this story. Well, I was doing some research for an article on Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the Indian revolutionary leader. Uh, you got to remember that we are talking about times when India was trying to gain independence from Britain. Of course. And so while doing this research, I came across a report which uh, mentioned the existence of an Indian legion, which was a regiment strength unit, which served under the German army command. And it was through this that I managed to read some books, contact some authors, and uh, get to know more personalities and witnesses, some of which you will see in the report. And this has taken me completely by surprise. Let's take a look then at Dananjay's report with Cecil Kindria. Ik ben in Ga en ik ben geboren in Leiden, datum 1644. Mijn moeder komt uit Zandvoort. Mijn vader was onderdeel van de Indiaanse troepen van de Duitsers in Zandvoort. Dit is mijn moeder en hier is mijn vader. This woman knows little about her father. A few years after her birth, Gary's mother married a Dutch citizen and chose to erase the memories of her recent past. She would never discuss her first love. Gary's father was called Mohammed. He was a soldier in the Free India Legion, a brigade which remained a closely guarded secret for years. It was an interesting sideshow. Uh, many people don't know about it at all. For me, personally, it meant surviving the war. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here to talk to you. <laughs> the fight for India's freedom was at the heart of this legion. Its story begins in Calcutta. Back then, India was very much under Britain's thumb and many wanted to see the back of colonial rule. One of those flying the flag for independence was Subhas Chandra Bose. He was staunchly opposed to the non-violent stance taken by Gandhi. Bose was convinced that Indians had to take up arms to guarantee their freedom. When war broke out in Europe in 1939, he spotted the perfect opportunity to free his homeland from Britannia's shackles. Since the outbreak of the war in Europe and in East Asia, we, the Indian people, could not have wished a better combination of circumstances for helping us to achieve our liberty. I am convinced that India cannot hope to be free until all Indians living abroad perform their duty in this momentous world crisis. In 1941, Bose managed to flee India, heading first to Moscow, before then arriving in Berlin. In his briefcase was a grand plan to recruit Indian prisoners from the British Army. With the help of the German military, he wanted to build a legion that would liberate India. What had happened in the early part of the war is that the Allies and the Axis powers had fought in North Africa, as a result of which Indian soldiers fighting for Britain had been captured by the Italians and by the Germans, and these soldiers were, were being held prisoners in Italy and Germany. And Bose saw these soldiers as wonderful material that he could recruit to his Free India Army. He saw them as mercenaries, as people who were serving a foreign conquering power, and that he could persuade them that this is your moment, this is when you become Indian. A string of meetings were held with the Nazi high command, including Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS. He said he was favorable to Bose's idea, but the Führer still had to be won over. 
Hitler um, had total contempt for Indian Indians, they were an inferior race, um, but um, he was persuaded, if you like, to see bows and use bows as a propaganda tool to show that um, the Germans were actually um, uh, trying to help people who had been enslaved by the British. Bose then went off to meet with Indian soldiers. Despite some early reticence, little by little, they came on board. They were all listening to him. And he was a fascinating speaker. And actually, they didn't want to defect. But then Subhashan Bose talked to them and said, you are to fight for the freedom of India. You can do that. As a 19-year-old German, Rudolf was due to be sent to the front line in Russia, but was then hired as the Legion's Hindustani interpreter. When I came there, company commander said, you can start straight away. They came the sick. I understood nothing. <laughs> so they noticed uh, I was not very much good at interpreting. 3,000 men signed up to join the Legion. They were now under the orders of German generals. Their training lasted for almost two years, and they were taught from the army's strict textbook. These rank-and-file soldiers were often promoted to the post of lieutenant or commander. And unlike the British army, the Legion was a melting pot of religions. It was all mixed. Not like the English, who had Sikh battalions or Muslim regiments or whatever. It was all mixed. And our legion song was Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Israeli, Apas, Mesap, Bahi, Bahi. And it worked very well. Bose then went further and created a new Indian government in exile. He set up the Free India Center in Berlin, from where he broadcast his speeches, harnessing the airwaves of the Azad Hind radio station. Only when the blood of freedom-loving Indians begins to flow, will India attain her freedom in club. What Bose was trying to do was undercut the uh, loyalty that the Indian soldiers had to the British Indian Army, as he saw it, and if he could stop Indian soldiers fighting for the British, that would be a huge, huge blow against the British. But with the German advance on Russia losing steam, hopes of pushing on to India faded. Bose decided to go to Japan, a country also at war with the British, with troops fighting chiefly along India's borders. The Free India Legion was therefore left in the hands of the Germans, and in 1943 it was billeted to the Netherlands. Its members were ordered to protect the so-called Atlantic Wall. In Zonfort, they fortified the beach and built bunkers. We had about uh, 350 odd bunkers, which had to be manned. So therefore, uh, the Indians came in here. They were posted here because there was a kind of gap. They didn't have enough people from uh, their own sources. So they put the Indians in here. Ad Neven's great uncle was a laborer in Zonfort at that time. Like the rest of the locals in this region, he wasn't hostile to the Indians. They were viewed as a friendly people who were also suffering under a foreign occupation. Young girls would brave the barricades in the hope of meeting them. Word spread around that there were nice, uh, nice men to be seen and uh, to dance with. So girls in Haarlem wanted to get into Zandvoort because they were exotic. They were always friendly and um, they had uh, things to tell and uh, things to exchange. A few months after their first meeting, Gary's mother told Mohammed that she was pregnant and they decided to get engaged. Here is the ring to that. I've got rings to hang in the water. But winter was fast approaching, and many feared that the Indian soldiers wouldn't be strong enough to stand the freezing conditions. Their commanding officer decided to send them to the south of France, near Bordeaux. 
The soldiers and locals bid their farewells on the platform of the railway station. Gary's parents promise to meet again at the end of the war. When they arrived in Aquitaine, they were once again posted on the beaches to bolster defences. But there had been no news from their leader, and so the disheartened legionaries no longer wanted to keep up the fight. The morale was very low. They didn't know why they were there. They didn't know what they were doing. Uh, many of them were often drunk in the streets. They behaved badly. Uh, and there was also, at times, mutinies. They um, caused a lot of problems for the local French population. Because, in a way, these were disoriented soldiers. There they were part of a, a small little unit, in effect, um, um, working under the Germans who were retreating, um, having been told they'd been recruited to fight for India's freedom, um, being in a place far from India. On June the 6th, 1944, Allied forces began the Normandy landings. Two months later, the Legion began its retreat to Germany. The soldiers, who up until then hadn't experienced frontline fighting, were violently attacked. I remember in, in Burgundy, there was a marketplace in a town called Bonn. And from one side looked in an American, and from the other side, one of our people. But both were not heroes, they just retreated. And we went very fast towards Dijon. But the legionaries were finally captured. Those that weren't shot dead were handed over to the British and sent back to India. They were imprisoned in Delhi's Red Fort and faced charges of high treason. The Red Fort trial led to um, the Indians finally discovering what had happened in the war, which had been kept a secret from them. And that led to a huge upsurge in um, um, Indian feeling for independence and uh, considered them as heroes who should be, who should be um, celebrated and honoured. Because of that massive public pressure, the soldiers were all freed in 1946. As for Bose, he died in a plane crash in Taiwan two years before India got its independence. He remains a controversial figure. Many still blame him for collaborating with the Nazi regime. Mohammed never returned to Zonfort. Gary waited 55 years before deciding to go in search of him. With the help of Ad Neven, she managed to track down her family in Pakistan. But sadly, her father was already dead. When he returned to what is now Pakistan, he remarried and got children. And two of them are here on this picture. One is a daughter, one is a son. We had hoped to see but never materialize you to all kind of put what is political uh, problems. Gary has kept nothing from India, except perhaps this Buddha at the bottom of her garden. She says it soothes her soul. Dan and Jay is still with us to talk more about this film. It's a remarkable story. Um, tell us why there were some soldiers who were reluctant to join with Bose. Well, their reluctance stemmed from the fact that uh, some of them came from uh, families that had military tradition. So their fathers, their grandfathers would have served in the British Army. So it was not an easy, easy decision for them just to defect, you know, at the snap of the finger. So that's what weighed on their minds. And the second thing was that uh, they were worried about the consequences their families back home would have to suffer if their defection became public. So that also bothered them. But uh, eventually Bose managed to convince around 3,000 uh, prisoners of war to join this legion. Uh, there were some incentives, like they were provided with ranks. Mm -hmm. And there were other added advantages of keeping this defection secret, as uh, Ad Neven, who co-authored the book For Free India, explains. According to the British, all the Indians were still in prison of war camps. So they received prison of war parcels through the Red Cross with all kinds of things, eh? sweets, uh, milk, condensed milk, cigarettes, whatever have you. But in matter of fact, they were in German service. So they should have never received those parcels, but they still did. So the Indians were very happy because now a big trade started between the locals and the Indians. The author, Ad Niven. Dana Jay, of course, still with us. And the story, Dana Jay, I know 
continues. And it becomes almost incredible, really. Bose decides to go from Germany to Japan. Tell us how, tell us why. Well, it was an extraordinary and a perilous journey. He traveled from Berlin to Tokyo uh, by two submarines. The first submarine, as you can see, went along the coast of Africa. And near Madagascar, he changed. He was transferred from the German submarine to a Japanese submarine, which eventually reached Singapore. And from there, he made it to Tokyo. The reason why he moved to Japan was because his idea of invading India from the West hinged on the outcome of the war between uh, Germany and the Soviet Union. And after Stalingrad, uh, in which um, Germany suffered a huge defeat, Bose decided to move to the other theater of war, which was Southeast Asia, which was much closer to India. And uh, Japan had already declared a war against Great Britain, and it had occupied a lot of territory, and they had reached the border of India. So it made sense for him to lead uh, the so-called Indian National Army or the Azad Hind Forge, which uh, was made of 40,000 volunteers, which was much higher than the Indian Legion. And what happened to these Indian soldiers afterwards? Well, uh, they were captured after the end of the war and they were brought to Delhi, not just the Indian National Army soldiers, but also the soldiers from the Indian Legion. And they were uh, tried. Uh, these were the famous uh, Red Fort trials, which took place in New Delhi. Well. Uh, this, the strategy of uh, the British authorities backfired because uh, there were large demonstrations in support of these soldiers, so their sentences were never carried out and they were freed. And that also led to revolts in uh, the Royal Indian Navy and also in the Air Force. So that kind of accelerated or hastened the process of Indian independence. So the Indian National Army had a very important, albeit uh, and uh, indirect impact on Indian independence. So, so Bo is very much a hero, although it may be a misjudgment on his part to side with the Nazi Germans looking back now, but you can see maybe at the time why it happened. Dana Jake, fascinating story, fascinating report. You can see it again via our website, francefancat.com. This is Reporters on France Fancat. Stay with us.